good morning and welcome to the sunday echocardiography session this is called sunday breakfast echocardiography session under the auspices of indian college of anesthesiology forum of cardiac anesthesia in bangalore indian association of cardiac thoracic surgeons and the indian society of critical care medicine bangalore chapter the comprehensive transesophageal echocardiography views this is the basic foundation for performing transesophageal echocardiography and uh, we have dr nagaraja from the jayadeva institute who is an expert in this field and i request him to share his screen and uh, before uh, dr nagaraja starts lecture i would like to announce few housekeeping housekeeping points Name Namely, uh, post all your questions in the chat box and keep the mics muted till the end of the talk. Excepting the speaker and the moderator, the mics, all the other mics should be muted. And at the end, if you would like to speak, you can unmute your mic after the talk is over. And then uh, uh, we will proceed with the talk today dr nagaraja is a professor in cardiac anesthesia from jayadeva institute of cardiology in bangalore uh, very well known for his um, knowledge base and expertise with this i would like to invite dr nagaraja to share his screen and carry on with the talk so good morning sir and, uh, and good morning, good morning uh, to one of you and uh, I thank uh, Kanchi sir for this kind introduction and giving this opportunity in uh, speaking in this breakfast session. I'm starting to share the screen. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Thank you. Just open the PPT, sir. Yeah. Yeah, to start with, uh, comprehensive transesophageal echocardiographic views. So, as Sir rightly told, it is uh, it's a basic to start any echocardiographic examination with a comprehensive, a systematic interrogation of the uh, heart is very essential to gain an expertise or to gain the consistency in acquiring the field. Is important so there is this comprehensive echocardiographic list today we'll deal with only 20 standard views there are right now 30 views which are additional that is eight modified and two have been added this year like 2022 it's been added two more views have been added so there are total 30 views but it's so important because there are many many of my surgical colleagues who have been joined into this critical care echocardiography so for them, it will be very difficult to understand the modified views. So let us understand the 20 standard views to start with. These are my disclosures. And uh, for a better understanding, Toronto General Hospital virtual trans echocardiography, uh, trans echocardiographic echocardiography uh, images have been taken. And Kanchizer has uh, given a practice guidelines for preoperative echocardiography. And there's Han et al., which is the guidelines by American Society of Echocardiography. First, before anything, let us understand how the probe looks like and what the probe is made of. The probe, this is the probe, and this is the flexible tip of the probe, and this is, and this is the shaft of the probe. This is the whole shaft of the probe. There are depth markings. There are depth markings here on the probe, and uh, this is the handle of the probe. And this handle of the probe has got two rotating knobs. This is a Phillips mare, and this is a GE mare. This is a GE made machine, but uh, based on the you know design. Both has almost a similar buttons. So this is the outer smaller wheel, and this is the inner, which is a bigger wheel. And there are two buttons to increase the multiplanar angle. So let us uh, let us see in a video how it looks like. Uh, so this is the uh, this is how the maneuver. So the the flexible tip of the probe can be maneuvered 
anteriorly and posteriorly and it can be as well as maneuver right and left this is anteriorly this is anti flexion this is retrospex posterior this is it can be flexed either to the right side and the left side this flexing to the left this flexing to the right and you have a multiplanar angle rotation we'll all be showing in the video so that you have a better understanding and two more things what you need to understand is we use the analogy as withdrawing the probe and advancing the probe what does it mean withdrawing the probe is when we are when the esophageal probe the trans TE probe is inside the esophagus withdrawing from the esophagus above that is pulling the probe is called as withdrawing and advancing the probe is pushing the probe into the esophagus into the stomach that is called as advancing the probe we use the terminology withdrawing and advancing and the lastly what we need to ask is excuse me so uh, lastly what we need to understand is the probe so using the using the handle of the probe you turn the whole of the probe towards the right side and whole of the probe towards the left side so the probe actually moves to the right and to the left the whole of the probe moves to the right and to the left so this is how uh, the maneuvering of the probe let us understand by uh, a video which is uh, which is a short video let us see how it is okay the tip of the te probe is malleable that is very flexible and there are two the the inner bigger one and the outer smaller circle or the wheel as we call it as so the in the bigger one which is used to rotate, rotate clockwise, clockwise it rotates anterior so the probe is flexed anterior and when i get back to the normal position and start rotating anti clockwise it is rotated posterior it is going posterior so coming back to the neutral position anti version it is called as and neutral retroflexion is called as neutral and the one which is the smaller outer circle we can rotate it clockwise clockwise it rotates to the right side of the patient and then coming back to the neutral anti clockwise rotates to the left side of the patient and the last in the final rotation is rotating the whole of the probe the shaft of the probe see the whole of the rotating the shaft of the probe the whole of the probe rotates to the right side and coming back to the neutral the whole of the probe rotates to the left side of the patient so the rotation is right side of the patient and left side very important and yellow before starting any red and yellow okay connected to the patient and then from the patient connected to the echo machine and then connected to the echo machine okay and see that the monitor you get a good ecg okay if you don't get a good ecg go to the setup go to the setup button and see that the ecg gain is 21% you can increase the gain more is the ecg gain you can now based on the depth of insertion as i told you there are depth markers there are depth markers till 100 as as the uh, te probe is inserted from the oropharynx into the esophagus you have depth markers you have based on the depth markers we have an upper esophageal views at certain depth that is depth of the great vessels and mid esophageal views these are the majority of the views are mid esophageal views and this is at the uh, roughly at a depth of 40 cm then we have the transgastric views that is this is the depth of the transgastric views where the heart has been visualized from here then you have the deep transgastric view that is the probe is inserted deep into the stomach and you visualize the heart from here this is called as deep transgastric views based on the depth of insertion we have these four terminology is called as upper esophageal mid esophageal transgastric and deep transgastric views now um, this is this is the same thing we'll be talking about these are the mid esophageal views and uh, this is the upper esophageal uh, this is upper esophageal views and then we have the transgastric views and then the deep transgastric views let us understand uh, before understanding what is transgastric views let us see how the probe is been inserted okay adequately 
put the jelly. Take liberal use of the jelly. jelly on the pro. Very, very important. Liberal use of jelly is important. Yeah. And jelly on the pro. See that the patient is adequately sterilized and pretty good. Okay. See that the patient is paralyzed yes. with the jelly. And then the mouth can you can the mouth it can. up. See that your patient is adequately paralyzed. Then lift the jaw. Lift the jaw up. And then lift the jaw. And then insert it into the patient. Lift the patient's jaw up. Yeah. And then insert it into when the you have a resistance, never insert that is most important. Insert it. Don't insert the probe when you have resistance. And now when you use the helm of the laryngeal get the, the mouth gag in. You can insert the PE probe and then but never fix. insert when there is a resistance. And put the mouth gag in place. Fix it. Fix it. And then now your PE is done. Fix it. Like that. As you now, as you pass the TU probe into the esophagus, this is what we call it as a home screen or the screen what really appears in majority of patients because you inserted a depth of uh, 35 to 40 centimeters in an average height male is this mid esophageal four chamber view. So this is the T probe, which is which has been seen here. This is the T probe, the T probe inserted over here and you have the, you have the interrogation of the heart in this in this axis so when you see the uh, when you see when you cut cut across this heart and then see it like that then you have all the four chambers being very clearly visible the left atrium the left ventricle on the right side of the screen this side of the screen and the right atrium and the right ventricle on the left side of the screen the one which is closer to the probe this is what we call it as the closer to the probe or the near field and this is what we call it as the far field because it is away from the probe. So closer to the probe because it is inserted into the esophagus, we get the posterior most structures of the heart in the, in the near field or closer to the probe. And we get the anterior most structures in the far field. This is the, this is the thing what you got to remember. And uh, what is marked in green? So what is marked in green is on this side of the screen and what's marked in red is on this side of the screen or the left side and the right side respectively. So this is the mid esophageal four chamber view, mid esophageal four chamber view in which we get all the four chambers of the heart. Let us first understand how to get the views. Then we'll, we'll come to know about what are the uses of these views. See accordingly, see if you see that the left ventricular wall, this is the anterior lateral wall and this is the inferior septal wall anterolateral wall and the inferoceptal wall of the left ventricle. So you can see the regional wall motion abnormalities. You can use to calculate, uh, this view is also used to calculate the ejection traction and the mitral valve abnormalities when you apply color. The mitral valve abnormalities can be observed. First, basically what we'll understand in this class is how to obtain a view. And then later we'll come to understand how actually do, um, uh, what are the different ways uh, this view can be used. So this is a mid esophageal four chamber. So now, once we increase the multiplanar angle from here. So in the video, I'll be showing how to, as I showed you in the video, that there are two buttons. These buttons, one is to increase the multiplanar angle. See, when you see over here, this was, and it has increased to somewhere around 60. So that is increasing the multiplanar angle by using that button. That button is used to increase the multiplanar angle. Once you increase this multiplanar angle, see the heart was like this. Initially, the interrogation was like this. And there is movement of the multiplanar angle. It starts moving. The angle starts moving. And then you get the mid esophageal by commissural view or mitral commissural view. This is called as mid esophageal mitral commissural view. So in this mitral commissural view, you have two of the commissures, the other two commissures of the mitral valve. And then you also have the scallops. We'll not discuss about the scallops. There's a left atrium, which is closer to the probe and the left ventricle 
which is away from the probe. And you have the mild scallops. These are the posterior, basically these are posterior scallops, and this is the midway anterior scallop. So this is these are the two commissures. It cuts across the mitral valve. If the mitral valve is like this, the probe cuts across the mitral valve in bicommissural view. This is the mitral commissural view in which the both the commissures, that is posteromedial commissure and the anterolateral commissures, have been have been dissected. So this is the mid esophageal mitral commissure view at a multiplanar angle of roughly around 60, 60 degrees. Here, see this multiplanar angle. Observe this multiplanar angle next to you. This multiplanar angle starts moving up like this. Starts moving up like this. This multiplanar angle starts moving up like this. So once you get this bi uh, bicommissural uh, bi commissure view or a mitral commissure view, the next view is increasing the multiplanar angle further, further to. 90 degrees. Again, you observe this multiplanar angle. This multiplanar angle, which is up 60, has been increased to 90 to 94 somewhere. So it has increased to 90 to dissect the heart into only the left atrium and the left ventricle. This is called as two chamber view. Only the left atrium and the left ventricle, two chambers of the heart, have been visualized. This is called as mid esophageal two chamber view at an angle of 90 degrees. In the mid esophageal level. This is the left atrium, the ventricle, and this is the mitral valve. Left atrium, left ventricle, and this is the mitral valve. And if you slightly withdraw the probe, slightly withdraw the probe, you can also visualize the left atrial appendage. Again, it cuts across the left ventricle. So you have anterior and inferior. So this is the anterior wall of the left ventricle, and this is the inferior wall of the left ventricle. So for regional wall motion abnormalities, uh, we can always use this view. So that's what, so this is the mid esophageal two chamber view at an angle of 90 degrees. Now from here, from here, mid esophageal two chamber view, what we try to do here is this is rotated. The whole of the shaft of the probe is rotated, keeping the angle same, rotated towards the right side. As I showed you, rotation of the probe, not the, tip of the probe, rotation of the whole of the probe towards the right side. To visualize the right side of structure, so all of the probe is rotated towards the right side. What do we get then? We get something called as mid esophageal bicable view. See, as I see over here, it this is the SVC and here we get the IVC. Here we get the IVC. This is a SVC and this is the IVC when you when you when you see from here so this becomes a SVC and uh, this is the left atrium this is the IAS interatrial septum this is the IVC and uh, uh, this is the so left atrium right atrium SVC and IVC this is called as bi cable because both the vena cava have been visualized SVC and IVC along with the left atrium and the right atrium interposing interatrial septum this is a very good view to see whether there's a, any shunt across the interatrial septum for, you know, so for a patent for aminovel, when you use a color Doppler across the interatrial septum, we can see uh, the flow across the interatrial septum when you have a patent for aminovel or in a residual ASD or post ASD repairs. So this is one of the good views to see the bike cable that is SVC and IVC. So SVC and IVC cannulation also can be visualized in this view. So this is the mid esophageal bi cable view, the angle remaining the same, that is 90 degrees from two chamber view, rotate the whole of the probe towards the right side to get mid esophageal bi cable view. The next one, again, rotate back. First thing is rotate back to the left side to get mid esophageal two chamber view. From mid esophageal two chamber view, increase the multiplanar angle to 120 to 140, wherever you get a better image. So 120 to 140, it cuts the left ventricle in the long axis, see, it was, it is roughly around here. The two chamber view was like this. To start with the two chamber view was like this. And the angle is increased. Angle is increased to 120 or 140 to get, this is called as mid esophageal left ventricular long axis view or mid esophageal long axis view. It cuts the left ventricle in the long axis, exposing the left ventricular outflow tract. Also, this is the best view to actually quantify, uh, there's the best view to see the A2. This is the anterior 
mitral leaflet. This is the posterior mitral leaflet. And you can see the aortic valve cusps as well in this view. And part of IOT also can be visualized. And here the, the left ventricle is the lateral wall. And this is the anteroseptal wall because this is this is the RVOT, always remember. So this becomes the septal, the anteroseptal wall, and this is the inferolateral wall. So this is uh, you can also measure the AML length and the PML length in this view. It's, it cuts across A2, P2. It, cut, it cuts across the A2, P2 scallop in the, of the mitral valve. This is mid esophageal LV long axis or mid esophageal long axis view at 120 to 140 degrees. Now from here on, from here on, there's only withdrawing of the probe. As I withdraw of the probe, see, the, the, this, is, this is the angle which it cuts. Now I start withdrawing the probe. Now I start withdrawing the probe. Now I try to cut around here. What does this do? Here is the aortic valve. Here is the aortic valve. Different. Here is the aortic valve. So I cut across the aortic valve in a better way. So let us see that image. See the aortic valve. So it cut, cut across the whole of the aorta is being seen in a transverse. It's absolutely parallel to the ultrasonic beam. So it comes in the long axis. The aortic valve measurements can be taken in this view. So this is the whole of the aorta for the interrogation of the aorta. The aortic valve measurements can be taken. This is uh, the annular measurements can be taken. The sinus measurements can be taken. Sinotubular junction measurements can be taken. In all the so, annulus measurements are usually taken in the one which is taken in the mid systole. The rest of the measurements, that is the sinus, the sinotubular ascending aorta, are taken in the diastole. That's diastole. So, this is interrogation of the aortic the aorta basically. So, that is mid esophageal aortic valve long axis view at 120 degrees, slightly withdrawing the probe from the LV long axis view. The next view is decreasing the multiplanar. See, observe this, this multiplanar angle, we start decreasing it now. So the one which is the, the dissection plane, the multiplanar angle, which is over here, start decreasing is it is going like this, start decreasing. So what happens once we start decreasing it? See, once we start decreasing it, see, this is the pulmonary artery. This is the pulmonary artery. Basically, the RVOT gets exposed. So here is the RVOT. The RVOT gets exposed. So this is called as mid esophageal right ventricular inflow and outflow. Right ventricular inflow outflow view or also called as wraparound view in trans uh, thoracic echocardiography. It is called as a wraparound view. That is, it is wrapping around the iota. The iota is here and it is wrapping around the iota. That's called as a wraparound view. So this is RV inflow outflow view at an angle of 60 to 80. This angle is based on patient to patient. We give a rough estimate of the angle so that it can guide you. So this is RV inflow outflow view in which the closer to the probe is the left atrium. And then you have the right atrium, the tricuspid valve, right atrium, tricuspid valve, right ventricle and the RVOT and the pulmonary valve. So this is a pulmonary valve as well. So you have all these uh, structures visible. So this is called as mid esophageal right ventricular inflow outflow view. How do we get this view? From the aortic valve long axis view, decrease the multiplanar angle from 120 to around 90 to around 60. So we get the RV inflow outflow view. RVOT, see, once you start decreasing it, you cut this. So there is no RVOT. You cannot see the RVOT. You basically see, what do you see? You see the aortic valve very clearly. You see the aortic valve very clearly. It's called as mid esophageal aortic valve short axis view. So all the cusps of the aortic valve can be seen. This is the left atrium, right atrium. This is the inter atrial septum. So the cusp which is opposite the inner coronary cusp and the cusp which is the anterior most cusp. So this is anterior, this is posterior, this is anterior, anterior most cusp. So this is right coronary cusp. The one which is on the left is the left coronary cusp. So you have a tricuspid, val a tricuspid valve of the aortic. So you have uh, 
the non coronary cusp the and the anterior most that is right coronary and the left coronary cusp and you can also once you start withdrawing you can also see the left main coronary artery also so this is to see the aortic valve area the using a planimetry you can see the aortic valve area also so this is aortic valve short axis view from here from the aortic valve short axis view you decrease angle to zero which was around roughly around 30 degrees you decrease angle or zero so what we had is we had we had something like this and we decrease the angle to zero, decrease the angle to zero, and then we start withdrawing. So we start withdrawing this probe. This is the probe. Start withdrawing the probe to see the ascending aorta. This is the aorta. You saw the ascending aorta in the short axis. So ascending aorta is seen in the short axis. This is the ascending aorta. Ascending aorta in the short axis. And then what is this? This is the main pulmonary artery. So you also see the Main pulmonary artery and main pulmonary artery posterior to the ascending artery of PA and then in the LPA. So here we have the RPA and LPA can be seen because the left bronx is air, it's a bad conductor. So you cannot see the, the right pulmonary artery and this is the left pulmonary artery. And there is one structure which is over here, one structure which is over here that is the SVC. SVC also can be visualized and this is the SVC. You can see the SVC and you can also see a, a central venous catheter also placed there. So this view is called as mid-esophageal ascending aortic short axis view because ascending aorta is cut in the short axis and then you can also see the main pulmonary artery, the right pulmonary artery and the SVC. So how do we get this view? From the aortic valve short axis view, decrease angle to zero, start withdrawing the probe withdrawing the probe above and then you might as well anti-flex the probe. Right? You have to anti-flex the probe. How do we anti-flex? With the bigger wheel, that is bigger wheel. rotate it clockwise. Clockwise, if you rotate, anti-flex the probe, then you, you might as well as to anti-flex the probe to get this view better. This is ascending aortic short axis view. From ascending aortic short axis view, just increase the multiplanar angle to 90 degrees. Now, how we were, we were cutting across like this, just increase the multiplanar angle to 90 degrees. That means 90 degrees, it cut across like this. So that is, once you cut across like this, then you have, this is the SVC, this is the, this is the uh, ascending aorta, ascending aorta will come like this. And the posterior to the ascending aorta, we had the RPA. So RPA comes in the short axis, this is the RPA, and this is the ascending aorta comes in the long axis. This is called as ascending aorta long axis. How do we do this? Just increase the multiplanar angle from ascending aortic short axis view. So we have completed what? We have completed almost these views. We have all completed from the home screen. That is fourth chamber. We have completed these views. The only mid esophageal view we are left out with mid esophageal descending, uh, descending thoracic aorta short axis, descending thoracic aorta long axis. Only these two views. How do we get these views? Come to the home screen. Come to the home screen. Home screen is basically fourth chamber view. Come to the fourth chamber view. From the fourth chamber view, rotate the whole of the probe. This probe is rotated from the handle. Rotate the whole of the probe towards the left side of the patient. Once you rotate the whole of the probe towards the left side of the patient, then you are rotating to the left side of the patient. This is the one which comes in view. This is, the. it cuts across like this. It cuts across like this. So this is the, descending thoracic aorta so it cut across the descending thoracic aorta so this is the descending thoracic aorta so this is descending thoracic aorta you can see intimal thickening you can see plaques you can also see um, you know the aortic uh, any pathology any dissections all can be visualized in this view so this is the mid esophageal descending aortic short axis view descending aortic short axis view from the fourth chamber view just rotate the probe towards the left side. You can get this view. From here on, increase the multiplanar angle to 90 degrees. We were cutting across like this. Now increase the multiplanar angle to 90 degrees to cut across the descending thoracic aorta in the long axis. So you get the descending thoracic aorta in the long axis. So very important. The most important is descending thoracic aorta in the long axis. We proximal part of descending, which is a dis uh, which is a distal, is always remember this is the proximal and this is the distal. This is the proximal. See here. This is the proximal and this becomes your distal. So this proximal and distal descending thoracic aorta. You can also confirm with pulse Doppler, see the flow 
during the flow direction, you know, the flow is always from proximal to distal. So this is mid-esophageal descending aortic long axis view. Okay, so uh, I think we are clear with all these mid-esophageal views and just a small description about the upper esophageal views. We are, we are done with the mid-esophageal views and only the upper esophageal views. From How do we get the upper esophageal views? Upper esophageal views is come back to the descending thoracic aorta, decrease the angle to zero. So you get the descending thoracic aorta short axis view. That is descending thoracic aorta short axis view. That is, this is the descending thoracic aorta, which is behind. So you had short axis view. And from here on, start withdrawing the probe. This is a probe, start withdrawing the probe. The probe is withdrawn, withdrawn, withdrawn. And then at some point of time, the round structure, descending thoracic aorta will be a round structure in the echo. So you start withdrawing, this round structure suddenly becomes like this because it cuts across the aortic arch in the long axis. This is called as upper esophageal because you are, right? you are the upper esophageal aortic arch long axis view. It almost becomes oblong. So upper esophageal aortic arch. This is the aortic arch. This whole thing is aortic arch. Aortic arch long axis view. So just withdraw the probe from the... Uh, uh, mid esophageal descending thoracic aortic short axis view just keep on withdrawing until your aorta which was circular starts becoming oblong then you have the ascending aortic long axis from here on just increase the multiplanar angle once you increase the multiplanar angle see the multiplanar angle is being see what we are trying to demonstrate here see you just observe this part see it was oblong now increasing the multiplanar angle what is happening it's becoming short axis that is which was like this it's starts becoming like this. So that is mid esophageal aortic arch short axis view. So here the depth was, the depth was somewhere around, um, um, what is the depth somewhere around four centimeters probably. And the depth you start increasing the depth to 12 centimeters. So you can also visualize the, what is this? You can also visualize the, let me change the color to yellow. So this is not yellow. Stop it. So you can also visualize the RVT also. That is RVOT and the pulmonary artery. This is RVOT and the pulmonary artery. You can also visualize the RVOT and the uh, main pulmonary artery also in this view. So this is called as upper esophageal aortic arch short axis view. And this is the common carotid artery. This is the common carotid artery, the left-sided common carotid artery. Here we can also interrogate. See, if you, if you can observe this, if I just rotate the probe towards the left side of the patient, I mean, uh, rotate the probe towards the right side of the patient, then you see the innominate artery in vision. And if I rotate the probe towards the left side of the patient, I also can be able to see the left subclavian artery. So this is an advanced uh, view. So rotating, we can also interrogate the whole of the aortic arch vessels as well. So this is the upper esophageal aortic arch short axis view. We can visualize the RBOT and MPA, as well as the left common carotid artery. So this completes our mid esophageal and our um, upper esophageal views. Now, before jumping into uh, transgastric and overloading you, um, what I would like to do is, I would like to just show you this um, image, show you this video so that I can run it forward. That's why I'm showing it in, in that I cannot run it forward. So there's a 16 minute video. Yeah. Right hand is always used to advance the probe, that is, into the esophagus and withdraw the probe from the esophagus, that is, pull it up and advancing is push it into the esophagus. And the right hand is always also used to turn to the right side of the patient, turn to the left side of the patient, clockwise and anti-clockwise respectively. And clockwise direction also does an anti-version, anti-clockwise does a retroversion of the probe. And these buttons on the left side can be used to increase the multiplanar angle. See, as I press this, you see in the monitor what happens. The multiplanar angle increases. The multiplanar angle increases. And as I press the other button, the multiplanar angle decreases. It can be increased up to 180 degrees and it can also come back to zero degrees so this is how you can do the manipulation and using 
and using the rotation rotating it to the right side and rotating to the left side of the patients these are the maneuvers of the probe now as we put the probe inside this is as i as i generally call it is a home screen there is a mid esophageal four chamber view at 0 degree axis we can see all the four chambers of the heart that is the left atrium mitral valve no i'm just running it because it's color doppler from here doppler uh, for we, we need not inflow. know all these things so we'll just see how to uh, visualize the views that's enough triangle see this is the four chamber view from there degrees. we start increasing so the, the multiplanar angle is increased to roughly around 60 degrees see what you get see we can get the left atrium and the left ventricle and you have two commissures there is a posteromedial commissure and the anterolateral commissure so posteromedial commissure has got a p3 scallop there is a p3 scallop and the anterolateral commissure has got a p1 scallop and interposing you have an a2 scallop that is an anterior mitral leaflet again you can use a color interrogation on on this color interrogation and compare spots from here this is the increase of multiplanar angle further to 90 degrees 90 degrees to get the two chamber view so this is the two chamber view in which the left atrium and the left ventricle can be visualized left atrium and the left ventricle can be visualized and if you turn the probe from the two chamber towards then you will be lucky to see the left atrial appendage also okay the left atrial appendage also can be seen and see that is the left atrial appendage i just withdraw the probe slightly to visualize the left atrial appendage there is a left atrial appendage mm -hmm. from this view so with the probe from this view i start rotating the probe just rotate the probe towards the right of the patient just towards the right of the patient to visualize see there on the monitor just i rotate it to the right of the patient so once i rotate to the right of the patient this is the view i get so this is called as a mid esophageal bicable view in which the ivc ivc is seen and then you have the right atrium right atrium no, right, right atrium and the left atrium above and then the superior vena cava superior vena cava that is a catheter okay so this view is also visualized so you can optimize this image better this view is also visualized for the color interrogation and see the patent foraminoval you see the nicus limit you can decrease the scale of the nicus limit decrease the scale of the nicus limit and see the color flow this across is, uh, the color flow across the interatrial septum so there is no color flow there is no patent for amen over plus pro from the same mid esophageal bicable rotated to its normal position we are rotated to the right and rotated to the normal position once you rotated to the normal position so there rotated to the normal position you have the two chamber view back again from the two chamber view increase the multiplanar angle increase the multiplanar angle to roughly around 120 and slightly withdraw the probe slightly advance or withdraw the probe to visualize the mid esophageal mid esophageal lv long axis view okay lv long axis view so this is the lv long axis view in which the lvot is seen there is a lvot and then you have the mitral valve then the left atrium left atrium and the aortic valve also can be seen you optimize the image better the rvot also can be seen this is the rvot optimize the image better to see the lvot in a better way just withdraw the probe so you can see the lvot and aortic valve better that is the aortic valve the aortic valve so this is called as a mid esophageal long axis view mid esophageal long axis pass see the aortic valve to open the aortic valve to open the aortic valve better increase the multiplanar angle slightly more around 130 see aortic valve we can see the aortic valve better now see that namaste aortic valve we can see better this view is very important this view is also used for the anterior mitral leaflet the anterior mitral leaflet length and the posterior mitral leaflet length also it's also a best view to see the mitral in
So I will again talk about all this. Now next, draw the probe slightly. What happens? Just withdraw the probe. So he is withdrawing the probe. Yeah, and just withdrawing the probe. Withdraw the probe so that the iota is coming in view better. See, it's, it's almost iota in the long axis. In axis, so iota is horizontal so that we can get all the. Yeah, see, I'm trying to optimize the image. See, iota is mid is a vessel, iota is the long axis, horizontal axis. So this is the best view. to take the iotic dimensions so we will not talk about the dimensions so how do you take the dimensions is we demonstrate we will not have the dimensions from the mid is a vessel long axis our angle see the iota decrease a multiple angle becomes the short axis so iota is becoming the short axis roughly around 60 degrees you stop the multiplanar angle and start optimizing by advancing the probe see just advance the probe slightly and see the monitor there is change the monitor Start advancing the probe. The R V O D open. And what do you see? See, just advance the probe slightly and rotate it. You see the R V inflow outflow view, in which the posterior most structure. This R V inflow outflow view. From R V inflow to decrease the multiplanar angle. Is the aortic. The aortic valve, aortic valve, the tri leaflet, tricuspid, aortic valve. So you can take aortic planimetry. Zero degrees, decrease the plane to zero degrees, and withdraw the probe slightly. It's okay. Withdraw the probe slightly. Withdraw the probe. See the aortic leaflets have disappeared. The aortic leaflets are disappeared. Now see the probe. What I do? Now see the probe. The bigger knee, the bigger forcing, is rotated. That is anti-flexion. Clockwise direction or anti-flexion. See, anti see the monitor. What happens? It is just to optimize. The monitor the ascending aorta shows you what the ascending aorta and the main pulmonary. Again, optimize the image. See, withdraw the probe slightly. You get the ascending aorta. That is the ascending aorta. That is the main pulmonary artery. That is the superior artery, and that is the SVC. See, that is superior vein aorta. So this is called as ascending aortic short axis view. Ascending. From here, increase the multiplanar angle to 90 degrees. Increase the multiplanar to 90 degrees. From here. chamber you this is the left atrium the left ventricle this is the left atrium and the left ventricle you cut that into two chamber view and also you have this is the anterior wall of the left ventricle and this is the inferior wall of the left ventricle and you also see the left atrial appendage multiplanar angle this multiplanar angle again increased into 120 80 degrees to open up the aortic valve so this is aorta is opened in the long axis see as we can see this is the aorta which opened in the long axis so this is strict long axis view so these are slightly difficult to understand but as we practice more from the uh, long axis view you rotate the probe towards the right side to so the right side structures so you have r the, you have the rv inflow view it's called as a right ventricular inflow view you see the tricuspid valve you see the right atrium you have the right ventricle so you have the rv inflow view this is a right atrium and right ventricle and the tricuspid valve can be this is the transgastric views these are the transgastric views keep it around 120 degrees and then rotate the probe the uh, complete trans short axis and take mid cavitary uh, short axis transgastric two chamber view by increasing to 90 degrees and increasing to 120 degree gets us a transgastric long axis and rotating the probe is a transgastric rv inflow views in the last view exhausting session the last advance the probe deep into the stomach now advance the probe deep into the stomach then you get you get absolutely a blank screen then antiflex the probe once this is the blank screen and start antiflexing the probe you see the, the left ventricle from the apex from the apex you start seeing the left ventricle so this is the left ventricle closer to the probe 
and the left atrium away from the probe because you're seeing from the apex into upwards. So this is called as deep transgastric view. This is called as deep transgastric view in which we can visualize the left atrium, the mitral valve, the left ventricle and the aortic valve. Aortic valve gradients can be very clearly obtained by this view. So uh, probably I have exceeded the time. So otherwise, um, we could have actually showed you the uh, live uh, demonstration, just a one minute video. This is from the transgastric view. What he is trying to do is from the transgastric view is going going back to the going back to the four chamber view. But they can do the rotating mode button and then advancing the neutral position. Advancing the probe into transgastric. He is starting to advance. Just show you this small bit. And this, and this. So from four chamber view, so it start at the one thing. You get a blank, and then antiflex the probe. See, as you antiflex the probe, antiflex this is the probe. left ventricle in place, and the, the more you antiflex the antiflexion, it will optimize your the mitral valve. The mitral valve can do this. Yeah, this is the uh, so decrease the antiflexion transgastric or you might see the basal the short axis. Transgastric basal we'll, uh, short axis. We'll have more time for this. Is the anterior uh, mitral. Uh, more time for discussion. So this is anyway a recap of whatever we have told till now. About all this recap. So I open it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nagaraja, for that excellent uh, demonstration of the standard uh, transesophageal echocardiographic views. Very well done. Uh, very well done, I should say. And uh, now, if there are any questions, please we will answer them. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen. Sir. Yeah. So there's one remark that it was excellent views, very lucid and precise. Thank you for that. In the descending thoracic aorta, short axis view, which wall of the aorta is closer to the probe, anterior or posterior? In the descending. Thoracic aorta. Okay. Short axis view, which one of the aorta is close to the probe? Yeah. Anterior or posterior? Yeah, always in the descending thoracic aorta, it cuts around laterally. It is not cutting around anterior and posterior. It cuts around lateral. Mm -hmm. It cuts around the, the left side of the screen is always on the um, on the lateral, but the one which is above is always the anterior, one which is below is always the posterior. Okay, the other question is uh, please give exact levels of upper esophageal, mid esophageal, transgastric, and deep transgastric views as per markings. As per markings, based on average height, say uh, roughly around 510, 58 to 510, it is uh, 25 to 30 centimeters is upper esophageal, around 40 to 45 centimeters is around uh, uh, mid esophageal, around 45 to 50 centimeters is. Uh, transgastric views and 50 to 55 centimeters is deep transgastric views. These are roughly the markings which can guide you the uh, based on the depth of the esophageal probe. Okay. Please elaborate common carotid artery visualization. Elaborate. Okay. See, uh, left common carotid artery can be visualized uh, as shown there. The First, get the four chamber view, rotate the probe towards the left hand side, you get the deep uh, descending thoracic aorta. From the descending thoracic aorta short axis, start withdrawing the probe slightly. As you withdraw the probe, this circular shaped deep uh, thoracic aorta starts becoming oblong. That is nothing but the aortic arch long axis view. From the aortic arch long axis view, just increase the multiplanar angle to 90 degrees. You can cut across the left common carotid artery, the aortic arch in the short axis. Now, this is based on experience. You might not be lucky all the time to get the left common carotid artery, but usually you tend to get this. I have a couple of comments to make. Uh, the, the, in the terminology used, it is uh, preferable to use antiflexion and retroflexion Version. rather than antiversion yes. and retroversion. Yeah, that is one comment I want to make. And the depth of feasible, I mean, the T probe to be inserted easily remembered is uh, 
ஒருத்தர்ட்டிஸ்ட் even if the patient is paralyzed you must use a mouth prop or bite block because when you move the probe in and out the short teeth will damage the probe so always use a mouth prop or bite block if there are any other questions uh, yes sir uh, good morning sir dr virender kumar from delhi sir hi hi yeah, tell me please uh, yes sir excellent lecture by dr nagar yes yes sir. very very well done yes Sir, sir, sometimes surgeons ask for the after the PDA closure to show the whether it is properly closed. Any mm-hmm. I, uh, way to show the surgeon that it is properly closed? PDA, sir. Of course, it is. Can I? Yes, yeah, it is Nagraj. It is for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, for PDA closure, usually the PDA is seen uh, when you see that ascending aortic uh, ascending aortic view. There also you can see the main pulmonary artery and the ascending aorta so there also you can try to see that or you can go to the uh, subclavian artery that is the arch view the subclavian artery when you mm-hmm. rotate the probe towards the left side you can the subclavian artery you can see any globular coming into the aorta distal to the subclavian artery there also you can visualize the pda closure or the other view is come to the uh, aortic the short axis the aortic valve short, there you have the pulmonary may uh, mpa as well as the aortic valve short axis there also you see the flow turbulence you cannot actually mm. visualize the uh, better in a trans trans esophageal but for pda trans thoracic uh, has a better sensitivity and specificity or it's better visualized mm. yeah. yes sir yes, yes, the trans thoracic yes sir, but during after the surgery it becomes uh, difficult to show them yes. yeah you can only see the turbulence i mean if there is any flow entering into the uh you know or coming from the pulmonary artery to the aorta you can just oh. show the flow turbulence you yeah. not actually see the uh, pda but trans thoracic yeah very clearly seen second yeah. intercostal space modified parasternal long axis okay, okay thank you sir thank you yeah. next question is how to visualize pulmonary veins oh this these are modified views anyways uh, uh, we'll be dealing it in a uh, separate session see pulmonary veins are posterior most structures and they are always better visualized in trans esophageal echocardiography point 1 point number 2 is you have the aortic short axis view the left atrium is on the nearer to the probe you just try to rotate the probe towards the uh, left hand side you tend to visualize the left pulmonary veins so rotate the probe towards the right hand side you tend to visualize the right pulmonary veins very easy way you try to withdraw and advance you can optimize the pulmonary veins the second easier one is just behind the left atrial appendage you get the pulmonary veins to visualize the left pulmonary veins you go to the mid esophageal two chamber view where i showed you how to visualize the left atrial appendage just rotate the probe towards the left side you can see the left superior pulmonary vein draining into the left atrium very clearly that is one of the very nice view to demonstrate the left pulmonary veins right pulmonary veins always the you know where you have the aortic aortic valve short axis view rotate the probe towards the right side just withdraw optimize Yes, you can visualize the right pulmonary veins i have the video for that probably if sir permits in the next class we deal about pulmonary veins sure should i agree with what you said and the next question is how to visualize coronary sinus coronary sinus yeah again that is again a modified view this is called as modified bicable view where we can visualize the coronary sinus uh, modified bicable view is uh, from the how we had the bicable view we just increase the multiplanar angle to visualize the modified bicable view where in the coronary sinus comes on to the left side of the screen where the ivc was present in a bicable view that ivc disappears and the coronary sinus comes there so that is called as modified bicable another view is there just from the four chamber view just slightly advance the probe you can just see a structure from the uh, from the right hand side entering into the uh, next to the tricuspid valve that is a coronary sinus again this is this is uh, this view also has been described probably in, in the additional view 
So that is another view how to actually visualize the coronary sinus. Thank you. Nicely presented uh, this one of the comment made on the chat box. In which conditions or situation TT beat or better than TE? Yeah, this is uh, like, you know, uh, one thing what we should remember is these, this is a real-time monitor and this has got a huge benefit over uh, TT because intraoperatively there's no replacement for a TE. And always, as I told, posterior most structures are wonderfully visualized, better resolution in a transesophageal over transthoracic, but anterior structures like how uh, uh, Dr. Virendra was telling the PDA, all these anterior most structures are better visualized there and infective endocarditis and pulmonary embolism and all these are better uh, taken by a transesophageal pulmonary vein obstructions. All these are better seen in a transesophageal over as a whole, in a nutshell, anterior structures are better visualized in a transthoracic. Posterior most structures are very well seen in a uh, transesophageal probes. They're closer to the probes. Thank you. I, I will add to yes. this that if there's an LV apical clot, that may be better seen in a TT rather than TE. Next Great. question is kindly explain how to get deep transgastric view from transgastric view. Transgastric, all transgastric from transgastric. Yes, sir. So transgastric, you always remember when you are advancing and withdrawing the probe. One important point: what you need to know is always keep the probe in the neutral position. Always Correct. zero degrees, okay. and when you have anti-flexion, release the anti-flexion, and then only advance the probe because though the esophageal uh, perforations, ruptures, and all are there, but still it is a possibility. So all everything should be borne that always in the neutral position and then at once or withdraw the probe from transgastric. Yes. You know, yes. At once the probe, as uh, Sir rightly told, it is uh, just 40 to 45, just a 5 centimeter depth. Just you at once the probe inside. Absolutely, the screen goes black. So once the screen goes black, that means you're deep into the stomach. Once you are in the stomach, just anti-flex the probe and start withdrawing the probe so that the probe comes and sits next to the stomach wall and you start visualizing the left ventricle from the apex of the left ventricle. So that is how we get the uh, deep transgastric phase. Uh, thank you, Nagaraja. This, the other question is how to adjust the multiplanar angle. Yeah, how to adjust the multiplanar, multiplanar angle. As I told you, there are two buttons which are, which are uh, seen. So the two buttons, one is to increase the button, other one is to decrease the button. So it can be adjusted from zero degrees to 180 degrees. And again, back, the using the other button, you can decrease from 180 degrees to zero degrees. So there are two buttons, which actually has been demonstrated. Probably it was too fast for you. So there are two buttons in the TE Pro uh, handle. Uh, one is to increase the multiplanar angle from zero to 180. And the other one is to decrease the multiplanar angle from 180 to zero degrees. I think um, that was the last question. In case of for the double mitral valve, we can difficulty eliciting both orifices. In case of double mitral valve case, we had difficulty eliciting both orifices. Which views can be used? We had cases, a couple of cases of double outlet mitral valve in which it was, it is something like a figure of eight. You get it like a figure of eight in a uh, transgastric basal short axis use a best view because you almost get it like a figure of eight. So uh, one mitral valve in the posterior one, one other mitral valve in the anterior one, you get a figure of eight. That is the best view to actually differentiate whether this patient has got a double you know, outlet mitral valve. That is transgastric basal short axis view. The view. I think that uh, finishes the questions on the chat box and uh, thank you Nagaraja for uh, joining us and for that excellent uh, demonstration. You also used video to illustrate your points. Very well done. Thank you. I hope you'll continue to be with us and uh, um, contribute to the training session. Thank you very much. Uh, before we close, I would like to I uh, request all the registered fellows to maintain a logbook and get uh, TEE and TTT done at the local uh, hospitals, wherever they are working. And the monthly assignments have to be done. And uh, it's, uh, we have made uh, the August TE workshop compulsory for all of you. Please uh, attend that one. And with that, I would like to 
to close the session and we will see you next sunday with another topic thank you nagaraja and thank, thank you thank you sir else thank for you for joining sir. us thank you. and we will see you next week same time same place thank you sir